<laughs> well, for me, it's, it is a joy and a blessing to be part of the medical mission, um, as I always wanted to go. I want to thank uh, Pastor Jennifer for trusting me and letting me be her assistant or helper again. <laughs> yeah. All I can say is that without God's love, grace, and help, and strength, uh, it is impossible, and also with all your prayers, it is impossible for us to serve the people, especially for those who are uh, impatient and ungrateful. We met a lot of people who were very impatient, uh, waiting for their turn to do the reading glasses. But with God's help, we did everything because, his strength, uh, because of His strength and empower us to do it. That's all. <laughs> uh, it's a great privilege being a part of a medical mission. This is my first time to uh, have uh, to attend this medical mission, especially in our place. It's a very great blessing for us that the God choose our place to have this medical mission. It's a big, it's a big team. I think this is the first time that uh, have a big team of medical missions comes, comes from another uh, uh, countries, from Canada, Canada, Hong Kong, uh, um, America. We are so blessed to have this medical mission, especially uh, uh, our, our, our barangay. Uh, I experienced this uh, medical mission that God is, uh, is working through us. Especially, I'm so blessed for the youth, for the youth, that they are giving their lives, their effort, their time to have their part. And I'm so thankful that God used me also, even though I'm in the assigned in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm assigned in the kitchen, but but God is 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 uh, doing miracles, miracle things, and do, doing great things through in a different way. Uh, I'm not a good cook, but God put me on the kitchen to assist my, my husband, my husband. But God is so good uh, that he give us this, uh, this opportunity to, to, work people, to work to the people and to serve people. We are not serving people, but we are serving the living God. And I really bless for the youth. Really, I'm blessed for this youth that they are giving their lives, giving their effort to do their best. They wake up very early in the morning to fetch, uh, to fetch some water because we don't have enough supply water. But God uh, uh, worked in amazing ways. He even, uh, God said that He may supply all our needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We are, we are uh, even though we are in, in, in and a bit tough situation, but God, but God uh, works in a miraculous way. Thank God, thank God that He is a He is a He is a living God. He is a good God and He is a faithful God. All uh, all the people there in our barangay during my last Sundays, they come. Some of them are come and they are declaring the good, the good things that they that they have done in their lives. And they said that we are so thankful that the God do something, did something in our in our barangays. So we thank the Lord for all what He has done, and for what we have done in our lives. Thank you. Amen. I'm going to be short. Well, I am short. Okay, um, I've been to. Uh, this is the sixth medical mission, and I've been to all the medical missions. But so far, this is. For me, this is the hardest um, uh, medical mission, um, organizing, um, communication, and everything. Um, but um, I think it was in the middle of the um, it was in the middle of the medical mission that, and we were on our way to um, La Union. That I was really uh, I was ready to jump off the bus and go back home. I was really it's like. Lord, um, I told God, like, uh, Lord, I, I quit. I don't want any more. Okay? But um, 
And I told God, like, Lord, I know that this is uh, your plan and your will. And, um, and I, actually, I was uh, reading something. I was reading something. It's uh, F.B. Mayers about Abraham, how God has called him. And it says here, it's not this a glimpse into the intention of God in selecting Abraham and in him, the whole family of Israel. It's not so much with a view to their personal salvation, though that was included, but that they might pass on the holy teachings and oracles with, with which they, have, they were entrusted. And, um, it's more of like God is telling me that I'm giving you this task, not for my own, but for the many people who, who would hear the word of God, and and um, that's when I I came back. <laughs> I back I backslid in for a, an hour, and then I went back. But um, and I told God, like Lord, I've it's like it's I'm my all of me. It's it's finished. Like. I've I've nothing more to give, but if it's your will, you're the one who's going to provide the wisdom. You're the one who's going to provide the strength, um, everything. And true enough, it's like within the hour, um, God has restored me and my strength. So um, we will need, and we see in this, we saw in this uh, medical mission that there are things that are lacking but it's God who filled it up and who answered our difficulties and he brought people he brought like the uh, like um, favor from mayor favor from people for us to be able to have um, a smooth medical mission and one thing that also um, one of the experiences that and I've learned from the medical mission is how to um, be encouraged with some of the uh, the members or the people who joined. Oh, one person, uh, the one that has a lot of people. I'm uh, if the this one, she's from the Atas tribe, and um, she told me uh, when they were when we saw them at the airports, like. You know, Pastor Mel Melrose, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, my dream. My dream is to go to an airport, and I am here. And, and it just breaks your heart that, you know, her, her dream and her desire is just to be in an airport and to see how God um, answers. And every time I would tell her that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those who love him. And I told him, I, I would just um, encourage her to continue in the Lord. And she even like in the elevator, she would say like, wow, I could only, I only see this in TV. And now I'm here. <laughs> and it just humbles me that, you know, sometimes we take for granted of the things that we have. But for some, it's, it's very precious to them and even with the youth. And another one, um, another encouragement, because I, I tend to talk to them more. Um, when we were at Payatas, I was encouraged with um, Pita Evelyn. The church that she was on, they are giving her free, um, free housing, and then her off her office is just ten minutes from from her home. But she chose to go to a place that is an hour and a half away from her home, and she has to do commute. That is one way. She has to do commute every every day, and the condition. And she said that her place before was um, it looks like a condominium, an apartment, but she went to a different place, a slum area, and she, she told me like, you know Melrose, it's God's will for me is to go to Payatas, and when she moved to Payatas, that is where she has found joy and fulfillment. So um, in, in the things that God 
asks us to do, he will not give us something that we cannot bear. And it's more of like an encouragement for all of you. Don't think that I don't have this, I don't have this. We have a God who can, and we just have to ask him. He, he, it, the gifts that he has is free. We just have to ask and be willing to go and obey. Praise God for every mission that we do. Um, the other last Sunday we were talking about salvation. Um, I was about maybe ten years old, and there was a um, how do you call that a crusade, um, and it went on for a couple of days, and on the third day I decided I grabbed my brothers and my sisters, five of them. So 10, 8, 6, to the youngest. And we went to the crusade. And the word was preached. And I received Christ. When the autumn uh, call was made, I grabbed my brothers and sisters and we walked over by force. <laughs> um, and they're Christians today. And they're serving God today. Um, so I, I just want to encourage us. You know, when, when you go for a medical mission, you don't have, you know, things already set out. For some of us, I mean, like the eye people know, we're going to do the eyes and all that. Uh, some of us are like, uh, okay, we're going to do the kids, and uh, Pastor Rena is leading. And uh, so you think, okay, what am I going to do? What is my part in this? Um, thank God for the Holy Spirit and, and, and the power of prayer. So we, we pray, uh, people are praying in the States, in Canada and all over the place, in Hong Kong too, uh, but the people who go also pray. Um, and for me, I've seen, uh, and, and the others will say the same thing, God working in very special ways. Um, and so you get there and things are just planned out and arranged and you meet together and you say, what are we going to do? This is what's going to happen. And Pastor Rene comes over and uh, Claude and comes over and other people come in and whoever comes in because the goal is the same because they have the Holy Spirit within them everything flows together and we sang <laughs> you'll see a lot of uh, videos of that we danced um, it was very hot um, at the end of the day we'd go back home very tired and not in the mood to talk to anybody <laughs> um, but one thing I rejoice in is we led almost every day, in fact several times in each session, we led the children to Christ. So the word was preached, and we tell them who wants to receive Christ, and their little hands would go up and would pray. And some of them were, you know, of course playful and joking and all that, uh, but we could see that many of them were touched in a special way. So we want to praise God for um, His work, through us and in us, and we, and, and you know, today, it's, the other day I said about, you know, hard soil, you, you go in as a farmer, it's dry, and you begin tilling and breaking up the hard soil, and uh, after a while, rains come in, or you might, maybe you irrigate, and then you soften the ground, and then you sow the seed, and after a few months, you get the harvest. And some of, of it was harvest, and some of it was sowing. Some of it was tilling the land, or breaking up the hard soils. Praise God for his work, and thank you for your prayers. Uh, we believe we will be seeing many from the medical mission up there soon and very soon. Praise God. The church, this is like a separate picture. But here we have uh, five doctors in this section here. We had our two doctors, and the uh, city of San Fernando sent us three doctors. Behind here in that door over there, we had our two dentists plus another one sent by the city. And here we have the reading glasses, and here over here we have the pharmacy, and people are waiting into each one of these lines. This is only in one, one settings, but each day it's a different crowd. Sometimes we're outside, sometimes we're inside. We have to build tents. But this is in the church with uh, Pastor Suzanne and where Zeni comes from and their place. I have a, uh, uh, we, we receive, and also, we receive a letter from Pastor Suzanne this week, and this is what she says. Go to the reading glasses 
PowerPoint. Uh, we, we deal with many PowerPoint this morning. And uh, go to the lady with the, that received the glasses. This lady that Pastor Jennifer talked about last week. So let me read a message I received uh, this week from Pastor Suzanne. Today, we had our first Bible study at Ilocano Sur, together with the five youth who accompanied me. If you remember the old woman who got her reading glasses and felt that Jesus came into her life. In her house, there are three families, and they all attended the Bible study. After we finished discussing about the good news of Jesus Christ for salvation, I led them in prayer for acceptance. Praise the Lord because they accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. And I could see the joy in their hearts. They were also willing to know more about Jesus. Thank you for the medical mission that God opened doors for His work to expand. And through this, many got saved. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is wonderful testimonies. I got one from Pastor Mayette, who was in our counseling team. Maybe we go back to the counseling picture, so Michelle. So Pastor Mayette was with many others, all of our missionaries. After registration, everybody went to what we call counseling, but actually it's the preaching room. They, they get preached at and counseled and advised about their lives and things. So this is what uh, Mayette says. My spirit was stirred up and inspired more to reach out to the lost upon seeing hundreds of people unsaved. Thank God that He had provided everything and brought us to those places and able to share the love of Christ to them. Almost 90% accepted the Lord, though there were a few who had no response. In Bagongbong, they first they were all receptive and the teachers also. The second day was the best. The patients apparently were tremendously blessed as they were overflowing with joy and thanks for the services they had received. This reminds me of what Paul said to Corinthians. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. And that's why we do the medical mission. Hallelujah. Another moving testimony is from uh, Pastor Amor. Because you know the, the medical mission is, we have to deal with, with crowds. Crowds of patients, crowds of people in patients. It's hot outside. The old village come. The way we organize it. We work and the, 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 the village uh, uh, send us the uh, health workers and the village officials and the securities and they, they, they get there. Uh, so, Pastor, so we deal a lot with, with uh, crowds, but actually it's about the individuals that receive Jesus. And this is a letter from Pastor Amor, who was also one of our counselors. In my four days of counseling, the medical mission was a big help to reach them and for them to hear and know that God loves them. There's one person I have shared the gospel. She's old and has a stage three cancer which the doctor said can't be operated because of her age. She was crying while accepting the Lord and was encouraged when she learned that the Lord is preparing eternal life for her. That's what it is all about. There was also an old woman who told us to continue to do the good things that we are doing. She said, that it's good that we are sharing the, the Word of God, which they all needed to hear. She said she was Catholic, but no one was teaching them the Word of God. She accepted the Lord. That's why we do that. And another reason, this picture also is meaningful to me, because in the, one of the second day in the Iloilo part, we had so many, uh, this was in the school, and this was the school principal and the teaching staff. And all missionary pastors, uh, who normally are the one preaching, said, Pastor, for this group, you should be the one meeting with them. So we went into the principal office, and there I could, by the power of the Holy Spirit and His wisdom, guide them who were all from strong Catholic background to hear the gospel and to receive the message of Jesus Christ. They all prayed to receive the gospel. They understood, they accepted, and they, they really were enthusiastic about that. And this is one of the places where we had more thanksgiving of all the, 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 the places. The next, next slide. 
also this was also in the, this is in Payatas. We did some home to home visitation with the doctors. This is the home of uh, this couple here, 85 year old. And this is the lady who, after Pastor Mayet shared the gospel to, after the doctors had finished a consultation, and uh, they cannot leave their home. Uh, if, if you see here, there's a rope. They have a rope above their, their bed to, to stand because they cannot even move around. And they are being served by their grandchildren or great grandchildren because they were very young children. So, this, I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, because otherwise I would be contagious. <laughs> so anyway, this old lady, she, pre she received Jesus Christ. And then when Mayette was closing you know, with her, she said, uh, you know, anyway, we will see each other in heaven. Like now you have received Jesus, you are ready to go to heaven. She says, when? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, this one here also is like... Uh, this year at the, at the medical mission, we, one of the, fir uh, the first time we've done that in all the years is to invite uh, uh, groups of young people, th the best youth workers of each churches, not all the churches, but some of the churches, to come and expand their faith, their vision, and their ministry understanding to come to work alongside with us. Many of them, they never c went out, and they were really, really uh, uh, shy about this. And this, these two young guys here, they are cousins. This one goes to church already. But this one just came from the big city of Manila, like very worldly, rock and roll style a bit. But he received the Lord Jesus Christ that day when we t I ministered to them. Renalin began, and then I, I, I continued with him, and then it, it led to... I have uh, 10 pages of testimonies. It keeps growing every, every day of people, and especially the young people, when you read their testimony, I will make it available. All of them are thankful, grateful for the experience of the medical mission. They have learned, they have been disciple, they have been used by God. One of, one of them, she, she touched my heart really because she says, until now, this is my first time to be exposed to these kind of things. I was always the one being ministered to. But now that I joined the medical mission, I am now encouraging people to come to church. So she moved from the being the receiving onto the, the giver and so many of them, that's all their testimonies, uh, to serve the Lord. It was hard, it was hard. God gave us the, the wisdom, God gives us grace, God gave us, thank you for bringing us to this medical mission. So many adventures and so many good things are happening in this medical mission and uh, that's why we do that and we are excited. This uh, The continuation of Pentecost. Amen? It goes on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.